Welcome back to our mornings. This section is Get Well, Stay Well. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by Felicity, who has been away for a little while. It's wonderful to be back, so I'm really enjoying it. Absolutely great. Felicity, what have you been up to? Have you been lying on a beach relaxing? <laughs> no, I haven't. I've been researching. I've been working so hard to get some really great programs for the future. So I'm also celebrating my 10th anniversary of getting completely well from um, pancreatic cancer 10 years ago, exactly 10 years to the month. So I'm just praising God and thanking him for his wonderful diet in Genesis. And uh, it's just wonderful that I'm able to be on Revelation TV and tell people this information because very often it's not the information that the doctors are giving us. It's information that goes back to being sensible about our diet and we're all living on processed foods now and uh, the wrong fats, sugars and salts. And people are becoming very ill, um, as I did, with, with just bad choices that we were really ignorant of. Now, Revelation TV constantly has new viewers um, to our station. So would you like to give your um, background into the history of what happened? What was your story? Well, I, I'm a Jersey woman and um, I used to work in, in the Houses of Parliament in London. Um, I was also a Red Cross nurse, so I got a nursing background. And uh, we went back to live in Jersey with three young children. And our middle daughter died of cancer at 20. She was drinking the uh, chemicals in the water from our well uh, because they were growing a lot of tomatoes and potatoes, which they do in Jersey. Uh, and they're using a lot of fertilizers and chemicals. And unfortunately, we had an old farmhouse and the chemicals had percolated down to the level of the well water. So over the years, um, my son was ill, my daughter actually died, and uh, that was in 1989. So with my nursing background and my political background, I wanted to find out why such a thing should happen in what was supposed to be such a safe and wonderful environment, living on a farm in Jersey. And um, we had all kinds of tests done, and we decided, we, we discovered that the water was the main cause and another of the causes was probably milk, which we're going to be talking about today. So um, after my daughter died, I really went into full-time research and absolutely passionate to find out how we could avoid the other children being ill. And um, really, for everybody as well, you know, this, is, this should be common knowledge. So um, then 10 years ago, I was suddenly struck down with pancreatic cancer myself and nearly died. I was given six weeks to live. And um, I was re very, very ill, terrible pain, terrible nausea. And um, a wonderful surgeon in London actually managed to put a stent in to relieve the jaundice because my, I was actually dying from liver failure. And uh, so I'm very grateful to integrative medicine, you know, the best of, of the uh, surgery that can be wonderful, but he, all he did was put a stent in. They didn't remove the tumor. They couldn't. It was in the head of the pancreas. If it's in the tail of the pancreas, they do something called a Whipple's operation, which I knew about, and they chop little bits off. But the thing is that cancer is not the tumor. Cancer is actually a systemic disease. It's right through the body. And so cutting out tumors and burning and poisoning doesn't actually stop you growing more cancer as time goes on. So um, I was very, very fortunate that I went to my church in London, Holy Trinity Brompton, for some prayer, um, having been given six weeks to live, and I was in huge pain. I really just wanted to go and be with the Lord. I didn't want to hang around. And um, anyway, my husband took me to the church, and I was prayed for by a wonderful pastor called Emmy Wilson, who had been a gastroenterology nursing sister. So she prayed for me, and she also said, you know, if you were got back on God's diet and you're really radical and you eat the apricot kernels and have the B17, that is the only way, actually, you will get well in the natural. So being already in ministry, all this just made a lot of sense to me. And it's all going back to God's word in Genesis 129 and 30, uh, which, which in which God tells us what we should be eating, that we should be having the fruit, the vegetables, the seeds, the nuts and the green plant. And uh, the green plant is all the vegetables, including wheatgrass and barley grass, uh, before it seeds. So it's not the gluten and gliadin seam that people usually associate with wheat. So I went on this. I was really radical. I had um, 
the apricot kernels and I also had the essence of the apricot kernels given intravenously which worked and uh, I gradually got better it took me eight months for the tumor to actually go down to a scar wow. and I was I was scanned all the way through so I've got the proof of that and um, I also cleaned up my diet completely I mean all I could eat in fact was uh, juices I couldn't keep anything else down so I got on the How juices did you and find that transition of, of well it was easy diet because it was no easy choice. for me I was so ill I had no choice I couldn't really eat anything at all and I was in huge pain I was on morphine and you feel very sick you feel very very rotten so all I could do was sip water I was told I had to drink a lot of water and uh, also the green juices which I did I did the colonics which I I know as a nurse are marvelous for detoxing the body so I was really radical I did what's known as the Gerson diet Dr. Max Gerson who was a German doctor um, all his family were killed in the Holocaust but he survived as a as a small boy and uh, came to America and was teaching all this was drummed out of the brownies by the FDA the uh, Food and Drug Administration because a lot of money is made out of chemotherapy and radiotherapy and so he ended up in Mexico which is where I got my apricot kernels sent from but basically you see we're getting back to God's diet it's the Genesis diet and um, although it's also known by other names Hippocrates diet the Daniel diet uh, it's God's diet it's God's original word to us in the very first chapter of the first book of the Bible so I just praise God for the supreme intelligence of his word now that's eating the raw foods growing your own vegetables and fruits and everything and just eating it from that way isn't it yes absolutely we have to come back to uh, you know cutting out the bad choices that we've all done you know we're uh, living on a lot of processed food now when you go into the supermarket the only bit that you is really safe to go is is the fruit and vegetable down the side and you look at all this packaged stuff which is all preserved uh, food and it's got chemicals in it it's a lot of it is genetically modified now for instance so we're getting more and more away from God's Word and that's why we have such a huge epidemic of disease and all these years later how are you feeling now I'm feeling amazing I'm going to play golf after this <laughs> Fantastic. I'm thrilled to be back in Spain it's wonderful with all the fresh fruit and vegetables and the sunshine the healthy lifestyle well, I'd like to remind our viewers that we have done a number of programs on Revelation TV with Felicity going through various health um, subjects. And if you would like to see those um, programs, please visit our website, www.revelationtv.com. We have a YouTube page, which is www.youtube.com slash RTV Europe. You'll be able to see some of the previous programs that we have done with Felicity. And she discusses the different subjects that's help, that helped her get through her, her situations that she had. Now let's go to today's subject, Felicity. We're going to be discussing milk. Yes, we are, because this is such a such misconception about milk. You know, people. I was told, you know, as a little girl, you drink up your milk to be big and strong and have big bones and be really healthy. And then nothing is further from the truth, because we now know that uh, baby cows drink their mother's milk and it grows them from a tiny little calf <clears throat> into a very large cow in a very quick amount of time and um, no other animal in nature suckles another animal especially after they're weaned but uh, we have been taught to drink cow's milk which in fact is poisoning us in a huge way and I've got a list of all the diseases here you know I had Dr. Brian Clements over from Hippocrates last year in uh, Portugal and Jersey and he said milk is the greatest cause of cancer and it's not just milk it's all the dairy produce as well so um, we have to be careful you know people say to me oh can I have cheese yeah. yeah well that's milk as well and can I have yogurt that's milk as well so we really have to use our brains be careful about it and it's all dairy produce especially the cheese the parmesan cheese which we all used to put in our spaghetti is probably the worst so we really have to cut out dairy and you know as a child I remember being given a third of a pint of milk that you had to drink at break 
and a bun. <laughs> you know, as Philip Day says, we knew they were trying to kill us when they turned you out in the freezing cold at break time, you know, in UK, and short trousers for the boys. And, uh, and they fed you this milk, which gave you a runny nose and catarrh and bronchitis and coughs. But people are still doing it because they still think it's the right thing to do. Let's take a look at our first clip that we have prepared. This is by John McDowell, and he's talking about the possible dangers of milk. Dairy products are high calorie. I mean, after all, they're high fat. They're intended to grow a baby cow to an adult cow. And as a result, they're full of calories. And those calories, we know, promote obesity. They promote type 2 diabetes. And they also promote heart disease. We also know that these dairy products are possible promoters of cancer because of their high calorie intake. Extra calories in experimental studies promote cancer. Dairy products are high in fat, which promotes obesity and cancer and diabetes. They're high in a kind of fat that you've always learned to worry about, and that's the saturated kind or the animal kind, and that's the kind that really rots the arteries. Dairy products are high in protein. As a consequence of their high protein intake, which goes along with the high acid. Remember, proteins are made of amino acids, and some of those acids are more acidic than others like the sulfur-containing amino acids. So dairy products, because they are high in protein, and aren't they sold to you because they're high in protein? Well, there's a negative part to that. That high protein, high acid nature of dairy products, what it does is it damages the kidneys, causes kidney overload for processing all that protein. As a matter of fact, the standard classic recommendation from all kidney doctors is if you have failing kidneys, you need to go on a low protein diet to decrease the workload of those kidneys, to decrease the flow through the tubules, to preserve the kidney function so you can stay off a dialysis machine. That extra protein is harmful. As a matter of fact, even in healthy people, people who have no apparent diseases, it's estimated that they lose about a third of their kidney function by the time they get to be 70 years old because of the high protein nature of the American diet. The acid the acid is what really damages the bones because the bones have to neutralize the acid and dairy products are high in acid. I mentioned to you that hard cheeses are very high in acid and Parmesan cheese is the most acidic food that people commonly consume. Now how does that fit with the message that you could, should consume dairy products to have strong bones? It's ex exactly the opposite of what the scientific truth is. Dairy products are high in cholesterol so they promote atherosclerosis, which leads to strokes and heart attacks. They're low in iron. In fact, dairy products have almost no iron in them. When somebody comes to me with a problem of iron deficiency anemia, the first thing I do is I look for a, a cause of iron loss, like blood loss. Are they bleeding from their intestinal tract? Or maybe a woman bleeding from her uterus? Or other sources of bleeding I would look for. Now, if I ruled that out, then the next thing I would think about, or maybe even in addition, to the problem of blood loss. Maybe this is compounding the problem. I'd look to whether or not they had a diet high in dairy products because dairy products has virtually no iron. The calcium and phosphorus in dairy complexes iron from other sources like green beans and beef and forms insoluble complexes so that the iron cannot now get through the intestinal tract into the body. And the third thing that consuming dairy does is it causes bleeding in the intestinal tract. There's a problem called Heiner's syndrome that little babies have. It's the most common cause of iron deficiency anemia. Heiner's syndrome is due to cow's milk. For those three reasons that I just told you, these kids end up with having microscopic blood in their stool or actually gross bloody diapers. And you can't stop the anemia until they take the kids off of the dairy products. Every pediatrician, every allergist knows about Heiner's syndrome. You have to think about this in adults too that have anemia problems. Is it about due to all that dairy consumed? or maybe blood loss in the intestinal tract from the dairy, or maybe all the fat that's in the dairy, maybe that's causing extra hormones in their system, which is causing extra menstrual flow. A dietary solution is the one you want to look for because that, of course, is something you can easily change. Welcome back to our mornings. Um, delighted to be joined by Felicity. Felicity, um, about this clip, what are the diseases that's caused by milk? Well, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, as he says. I mean, it's very interesting that stage one diabetes, which is the one that children have, is really caused by the cow's milk, and they've only just discovered that. So that's really vital. 
Um, so those three are the biggest killers as well. The heart disease, the cancer, and the diabetes at the moment is, is the worst killer for us. Um, the other ones are just jotted down because people can then relate to what I'm talking about. There's acne. Now, if you remember, I had a lovely girl come on my course, an actress who wanted to be obviously in films, but she had a bad skin. She completely eliminated all that problem by coming off dairy. Asthma, that's huge. Children are so uh, prone to asthma through the milk. Autoimmune disease, so that's rheumatoid arthritis, arthritis, um, chronic fatigue, all those sort of autoimmune things like lupus and um, depression and epilepsy as well because it affects the mind. You know our food affects body and mind. Um, eczema, or as the Americans say, eczema. Emphysema, because we get clogged up with the mucoid plaque of milk. GERD, G-E-R-D, which is gastroesophageal reflux disease. A lot of people say that you know, when they go to sleep at night, they can feel this acid coming up. And this is, uh, this is completely eliminated when we come off all the dairy produce. So now, why do they feel the acid coming up? Well, probably they? at night, they're finished with cheese. Mm -hmm. You know, we very often do. And, or I used to, I should say. Mm -hmm. So, um, and maybe they've had a coffee with milk in it, cream in it. Uh, it also affects the kidneys, which is interesting. I was greeted at the hotel when I got back the other day by this waiter saying, oh, I've been waiting to see you. I've got such kidney problems, kidney stones. And the first thing I said was, come off milk. So Why is it that we haven't heard so, it's not publicized, do you think, as much, the, the danger of drinking milk and well, dairy? Well, it's you say? because of the dairy industry. And, um, you know, I come from, the, from Jersey, which is uh, famous for the Jersey cow. A lot of our viewers come from Ireland. I've had a lot of people this summer come over to me uh, from Ireland, and they've all got problems from dairy. And uh, it's really scary that they're still giving it to the grandchildren, you know, in the, in the nursery. And uh, it's a matter of education. But there's a lot of money involved in all the food industry the dairy industry, the meat industry. And, you know, we, we're quite gullible as the public. We think that governments are watching out for us. But like tobacco, I mean, they're still allowing us to smoke tobacco. And in fact, for years, they were, doctors were saying on TV that smoking was good for you. This is about 30 years ago. And now they've had to stop that. And then the other few things, leukemia and lymphoma are huge from milk. And of course, that's what my daughter had. She had Hodgkin's osteoporosis because the milk honeycombs the bones as the calcium is drawn to protect the heart out of the bones which are an easy source now you've mentioned all the all the things that milk can cause yeah. so what is an alternative to milk well the best one if you want a white drink is a banana you just blend up a banana in in water and if you want a, a white sweet drink banana milk is the easiest in the world uh, almond milk, there's rice milk, there's soy milk, but these other ones that you buy, there's oat milk as well, the ones that you buy um, are slightly dubious because they've obviously got preservatives in, they're in a pack, they're in the shop. And you know, what I have learned the hard way is that really I have to take control, I have to take responsibility for what I put into my body. And so I've, um, I think it's much better and safer to eat at home, to do your own food, to say nothing of being much cheaper. I would like to remind our viewers that we are live at the moment, so please do send in your emails and your text messages and they will come on screen. I've just seen that we had an email here from Jill. I think we've just answered your question, Jill, about the, whether rice milk is okay for us. Um, so please do continue sending your emails in. Yeah, I mean, rice milk is better, obviously, because it's not got the, the cow's milk content of the very high protein, the very high fat, and the leukemia and um, lymphoma viruses that are in the milk, although they say that there isn't any in there. But it's interesting that Dr. McDougall, who we've just been watching, um, has they've, they've done a lot of tests, uh, all the main doctors are on this now, and 75% of us have got um, immunity in our bodies to lymphoma from the milk. We've already uh, had an attack of lymphoma 
you know, with a cold maybe and a fever that we didn't, that we, our immune system managed to fight off. So we didn't succumb. But the thing is, it's, it's a cumulative effect. The more we do these things, uh, you know, the, the more likely we are to become ill. Now we're just about to go to our advert break. Um, we'll be continuing the subject of milk as we return. What does our viewers have to look forward to? Or should we not say we look forward to, but what, what are we going to be discussing and warning them perhaps? Well, we'll answer some emails. Um, we're going to talk about, we continue to talk about milk, yes, and juices maybe. Absolutely. Because if we can get onto the juices instead of the milk, we're much better. Well, like I said, we are going to our advert break now. Um, so we will continue to talk about milk, uh, which is our subject today, but we'll also try and cover some of your emails as well. So I would like to encourage you to send in your text messages and your emails into the show and we'll try and cover through. So please stay tuned, maybe put the kettle on without milk and we'll be right back. Hi there, welcome back to our mornings. Get well, stay well with the lovely Felicity. Um, today's subject is milk. I'm just gonna read a couple of emails that we've received into the show. So we are live, so please do continue to send in your emails. Um, this one's from Paul in Sheffield. Is goat's milk a good alternative to cow's milk? Well, it's still an animal protein and it's high in fat. It's likely less um, of an allergy than the cow milk, but if you can possibly get off animal protein, so much the better. Okay, I have another email here from Maria. Um, can I have almond milk in the cartons from the supermarket with added vitamins but unsweetened? What do you recommend? Well, again, it's, um, it's got the preservatives. It's, it's come from a package. Uh, it's not the ideal thing, but we don't live in an ideal world. So if she finds it difficult to blend a banana in, in uh, water or do the almond milk uh, at home, then certainly go for that instead of the cow's milk because you're doing yourself a lot of good by coming off the cow's milk. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to our um, second clip today. Um, this is still with um, Dr. John McDougall um, and he's talking about allergies from milk. These environmental contaminants result in serious problems such as cancer. Breast cancer has been studied by many researchers and published in many scientific er journals as to, be, as to have been caused or promoted by these environmental chemicals. They get into you through the food that you consume and particularly the animal products. Parkinson's disease, other kinds of neurologic problems that result in you having difficulty thinking are a consequence of these environmental ch chemicals. As a result, also these environmental chemicals will cause hormone problems in people. Dairy products have something unique that makes them a bit different than animal foods, and that is that their proteins are highly allergenic. You may have heard that the number one cause of food allergy in children as well as adults is dairy products. You may have heard doctors say or mothers come back and tell you that you know that I took my child to a doctor with a runny nose or ear problems or other allergies. The first thing the doctor said is take them off the dairy products. Well, there are other serious allergy type problems that we call autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or type 1 diabetes that also are initiated by the dairy protein, which makes them a bit unique than other animal products. And also dairy products are full of microbes. They're full of organisms that can cause infection. Let's uh, talk about this microbe thing for just a minute. Dairy products are pure white. But one of the reasons they're white, the dairy industry will not brag about, and that's because part of their whiteness comes from white blood cells. White blood cells are commonly called pus cells. Now I want you to know that the dairy industry, they have rules, and they're conscientious about their products, and they set up a rule back in 1993 that said that a milliliter of milk cannot contain more than a qu three quarters of a million pus cells no more than 750,000 pus cells per cc of milk. A cc is about a 30th of an ounce. And I want you to know that the dairy industry, they stick by their rules. As a matter of fact, there was a study recently published where they looked at the milk in New York State and they found on average there were 363,000 pus cells 
per cc of milk examined. Now those white blood cells, they had to be there for a reason. They had to fight off the nearly 25,000 bacteria that were found in the milk and those bacteria were there to fight off infections that are common in the cows. I love that advertisement that they put out for the dairy industry about the milk mustache, but it's not truth in advertisement. If it was truth in advertisement, they'd have that mustache properly labeled. They'd say this milk mustache, it contains a quarter million pus cells and about 25,000 bacteria. You think you'll find a movie star or other personality carry a must milk mustache with that particular labeling on it? I don't think so. <laughs> Dairy products were the most often recalled product, food product, by the FDA between October of 1993 and September of 1998. They were recalled because of contamination with microorganisms such as Salmonella, Staphylococci, Listeria, which can cause abortions and miscarriages, deadly E. coli. E. coli is the bacteria that you often hear contaminating food that will kill children. Also a bacteria called Mycobacterium paratuberculosis, which is believed to be involved in the development of Crohn's disease. Hi, welcome back. Um, Felicity, um, the doctors there talking about the white blood cells and the pus cells. Can you just expand on that, please? Well, that's pretty horrific, isn't it? Because we thought the white moustache was so healthy. And I remember people advertising that when I was young. So, yes, I mean, it's the white blood cells and the pus, the high protein and the high fat content in the milk that is so dangerous. So this is the uh, bovine leukemia virus, which is now so prevalent. Um, you know, when you're giving your grandchild a lovely glass of cold milk, um, maybe you're giving them a lovely glass of bacteria, pus, and maybe even leukemia, which is a horrendous thought, having had a daughter die of leukemia. And of course, we, uh, living there, we, we thought that, you know, the milk was really uh, so wonderful and rich and uh, so good. But it, it is a matter of education, and that's why I'm passionate about it. Now, Dr. McDougall um, talks about the allergy problems. Can you, would you like to explain why, why do they get out? Why are there so many well, allergy problems? The, milk is the largest cause of colds, coughs. The reason is that it builds up mucoid plaque in the body. And since I became dairy free, uh, which was about five years ago, um, I completely cleared up asthma and coughs and colds. I was one of those children who always had coughs and colds and earaches and sinus and rhinitis and all these problems. And it seems to me that the children nowadays are even worse. I think that they're um, always having runny noses and it's completely unnecessary. And you can save so much suffering for children, especially having their tonsils out, having these terrible earaches, which are absolutely agonizing for little children. I mean, they just sit and cry. And um, as soon as they come off dairy, that completely goes. It's amazing. And it'll happen even within a week or two that the body starts clearing up the mucus, especially when you start putting in the lovely juices instead of the milk, because people say, what am I going to drink? So I say the hot drink is the hot honey, lemon, ginger, and mint that I talk about. That's my signature drink. And it's a wonderful, wonderful drink a little bit of honey, not too much if you've got diabetes or cancer. But So this is someone who is used to having their coffees, having used to having their teas or something like that. Yes. This is like a replacement. Yes. I mean, chamomile tea is good as well. But the hot honey, lemon and ginger is absolutely and this is fabulous. Fresh. Would they need to yes, you do it with a little bit of fresh lemon just squeezed in the hot water and just a tiny half teaspoon of honey, just half, really small. and. Um, little bit of ginger, the root ginger, I just slice that up and put it in, and a bit of mint on the top, which makes it taste and smell lovely. So it's a wonderful drink. I learned that from one of the top doctors. Is there an alternative cold drink that they could take rather than milk? Well, that's when we come into the juices. So there's the wheatgrass and then lovely green juices, because wheatgrass is quite difficult for some people to swallow down. So uh, I always say start with the cucumber, the celery, put a little parsley, um, chard, kale, whatever green vegetables you have. You can put half an apple in to make it taste nicer. A little bit of ginger if people like ginger. It's a fabulous drink, the green juice. And that's the best for alkalizing the body. 
Now, some of our viewers might be interested to see how would they grow their own wheatgrass, for example. How easy is it to grow wheatgrass? Well, we made a wonderful program on that, didn't we? And uh, that was that American guy who, who uh, showed a YouTube of it. Really easy, very good. So I'll be growing my own now I'm back in Spain. Excellent. Well, let's take a look at our third clip. This is talking about the various diseases further um, that is caused by dairy products such as milk. I used to be a general practitioner. For three years I saw kids. For three years I saw constipated kids in terrible pain. This is a usual problem, not just one that appears in the scientific literature. Just for this problem alone, you would think that the school lunch programs, the US government would take and ban these products from the schools just to relieve that simple kind of suffering which is not only painful, but also very embarrassing for a child. You look around your neighborhoods, and you see kids with, with snotty noses. You talk to the parents, and they're taking the kids to the doctor every month for ear infections. Do you think this is normal? You think kids are supposed to have snotty noses and ear infections? Kids will have uh, gastroesophageal reflux, asthma, eczema problems. This is not normal. This has all been tied to the dairy product consumption that's encouraged by the dairy industry and most of us have bought into. There's a more serious problem that affects kids. It's called type 1 diabetes. Horrible disease. You've ever, if you wouldn't want to wish something so terrible on a family as to have a member develop type 1 diabetes, it's not just a disease of children, even though this used to be the most common kind of diabetes in children. These days, because children are getting so fat, they're developing a lot of type 2 diabetes, which is now, it is now becoming competitive as far as the number of cases type 1 versus type 2. Well, type 1 diabetes is where the pancreas is destroyed. The initiation of that destruction is caused by cow milk protein entering the bloodstream. That's what the scientific research says. In fact, it is so compelling that the American Academy of Pediatrics work group on cow's milk protein and diabetes in 1994 made a statement that still stands today. They said early exposure of infants to cow's milk protein may be an important factor in the initiation of the beta cell destructive processes in some individuals. Beta cells are what make insulin in the pancreas of the child. And they recommended that you stop feeding cow's milk to children to prevent insulin dependent diabetes, type 1 diabetes. Many of you are on the internet and if you go to the internet and you plug in cow milk or cow's milk and some interesting diseases, you'll find that the internet at the National Library of Medicine will take and provide you a tremendous amount of information on how cow's milk, particularly cow milk protein, is associated with many of our common diseases. If you go there and type in some of the following diseases, you'll find some very interesting research that shows that cow's milk is associated with or definitely the cause of various problems that are quite serious and quite common, like canker sores, tonsil enlarged. Well, you think it's normal to have enlarged tonsils? These tonsils are enlarged to take and defend you. What they do is they serve a purpose. What happens is tonsils form a barrier at the beginning of the intestinal tract. And they're there to protect you from invading substances like viruses and bacteria. Well, one of the invading things that comes into the body that's not natural and shouldn't be there is cow milk. Not human breast milk, but cow milk. And so the tonsils enlarge, and then they eventually get worn down and infected. There's actually a study done where they took children off of cow milk with very severe tonsil enlargement, and the tonsils, they shrunk. Vomiting problems, gastroesophageal reflux, ulcer disease, various colic problems. Even children that are breastfed. You know children who are breastfed are not supposed to get colic? But they do if the mother consumes cow's milk. And then what happens is the cow milk protein, you can actually measure this in the mother's milk, it goes into the baby's intestinal tract and the baby gets colic. So not only do you have to breastfeed your child, you also have to have a clean diet yourself to prevent this common allergic type of reaction called colic from occurring in a breastfed baby. Lower intestinal problems are quite common also and caused by dairy products, such as bloody stools, painful defecation, constipation as I talked to you about, colitis, Crohn's disease, and all sort of colitis have all been associated with dairy product consumption. Respiratory problems such as nasal stuffiness, runny nose, ear infections, sinusitis, asthma, wheezing problems. Bone problems such as generalized nonspecific arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and even juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. I want to tell you, if you want to see a sad case, 
A couple of times in my medical practice, I have seen children, young children who have juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. It's a terrible disease. These children, their bones don't grow. They look like uh, refugees, like little children that would come out of a prisoner of war camp. They're usually in wheelchairs. They have little tiny jaws. Their life is, of course, very short and very painful. I have had two children in my practice who have, their parents have understood the message that this can be caused by callous milk consumption and both those kids were cured of juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. And by the way, that happens to also be published in a British medical journal. Hi there, welcome back. Um, Felicity, I've got another couple of emails to read to you. Um, hi there, this is from uh, Manny. I drink organic skimmed milk. Is that bad too? Well, it's still cow's milk, isn't it? it? Organic makes it slightly better, but it's still, you've still got all the things that he's been talking about. Okay, here's an email from Joan asking you, um, what are your thoughts on coconut milk? Well, coconut milk is uh, pretty healthy. That's a really good thing to have. Um, you can also mix it with some of the fruit juices that I, I talk about, the fruit and the vegetable juices because it, it slows down the sugar rush in the body, in the blood sugar. It's quite interesting. Okay, let's go back to the clip that we've just seen by um, Dr. McDougall. Um, he mentions how, the, how much milk they have in the schools and it's a cause of constipation in our children. Yeah, absolutely, yes. It, it just clogs the body up with the mucoid plaque. So if the mucoid plaque goes into the intestine, um, you're going to get constipated, you're going to get blocked. If it goes into the joints, you get arthritis. If it goes onto the chest, you get asthma and bronchitis. And then, you know, when you have a cold, most people are okay in three or four days. But if people are chesty, then they get a lot of mucoid plaque. They're coughing up disgusting stuff for ages. So it's a matter of really detoxing the body, which is what my courses are all about. In a week, you can detox people. Now, it also talks about type 1 diabetes. Explain to us about that. Well, that's scary because that's when the pancreas is completely closed down and uh, those children will probably be condemned to having insulin the rest of their lives. Except I work with a Dr. Gabriel Cousins in America who has an amazing place called the Tree of Life in Arizona and uh, he can get even stage one, sometimes he can get them, he can get stage two clear in a week. So can Charlotte Gerson. So it's something that you can do. Uh, diabetics are told by their doctors, you know, that you'll have this for life. But it's not true. When you really radically detox and restore the deficiency of living enzymes in the body and rehydrate, uh, you can get well and stay well. Can you give us some um, advice for us, any of our new mothers out there who are breastfeeding? What do, how careful do they need to be for what they're eating? And well, they've got to be careful that they're not drinking the cow's milk because then that will go through and, and go through to the baby and give it colic. And so my own daughter breastfed as long as she possibly could, although she was working. She's an amazing girl. And uh, she breastfed for as long as she could. And then we went on to juices, as carrot juice and, um, you know, lovely gentle juices. I like the rainbow food because that's how God has you know, given us this wonderful promise of the rainbow and also the wonderful colors in the fruits and the vegetables. So the green juice, yellow juice, orange juice. Actually, oranges are quite acid, so you are better with satsuma or tangerine juice. Uh, pineapple juice is wonderful, of course. And um, if you can have a rainbow, like be beetroot juice as well, because beetroot juice is delicious. So you're getting a rainbow of colors and so they are all giving you these different um, wonderful constituents like lycopene and carotene, you know. Our eye really guides us to what we should have. It's interesting. Let's take a look at our final video here that we have prepared um, by Dr. McDougall. Um, he's talking about the, um, how dairy is the most damaging of the four food groups. You've heard how red meat's not good for you, how it promotes heart disease and cancer and all kinds of problems. And most of you, most consumers in this country, even though they still consume it, know there's a problem. But you believe in dairy products. You believe they're health food. I want you to change your way of thinking. I want you instead to think of dairy products as liquid meat. And to make my case, what I want you to do is I want you to compare the macronutrient content, in other words, the large nutrients, between dairy products and meat. If you compare beef 
to cheese, you find that they're both about 70% fat. The amount of protein is very similar, 25 to 30%. You found that they have virtually no carbohydrate. They have no dietary fiber. They both have similar content of cholesterol. They have no vitamin C. So if you can put it in that perspective, if you can stop thinking of cheese and milk and so on as health food, as nature's most perfect food, something you never grow out your need for, if you instead can think of it as liquid meat, then you're getting pretty much on target. People bargain with me all the time. They, they come to me and they say, you know, I, I'm ready to change my diet, but just not completely. So I'll, I'll just make some small changes. What do you suggest I give up? You know, should I give up cigarettes or should I give up whiskey? Should I give up dairy or should I give up beef? It's a hard one. But sometimes I have to help them make those kinds of decisions. And one of the hardest decisions for women to make is to give up the dairy group. Men can do it, yeah. I think it's a gender thing. I hope I don't offend anybody here, but I think it's a gender thing. What I find is that men will tell me that they can give up milk and cheese, no problem at all, but not their meat. And what do women say? I've seen this over the years, and actually there have been psychological studies to confirm what I have observed, and that is that women have trouble giving up the dairy, don't they? And, you know, it's, I think it's because it's kind of a, a traditional woman kind of thing. You know, it's associated with, uh, with mothering, with nurturing. It's a domestic thing. Remember, women used to stay around the, the village and milk the cows. It's kind of a homegrown type thing, dairy products. It's a, it's a, a, a home-associated industry, family-oriented. And of course, who gets the bulk of the advertising messages from the dairy industry? It's women. You've got to drink it for your bones. That's the primary selling message out there. And so women have the most difficult time giving up the milk. Well, with that in mind, if you were going to bargain with me and you were going to ask, what of the basic four food groups should I give up? Do you remember the old basic four food groups? Advertising dairy and meat and vegetables and fruits to you. An advertisement, by the way, usually put out by the dairy industry. If you bargained with me and you said, for my better health, for the health of my family, which of the four groups should I give up? Obviously, it wouldn't be the fruit and vegetable, would it? But when it came to the dairy of the meat group, I'd tell you, give up the dairy. Why? Because it has similar problems, as I showed you the macronutrient content, as the meat groups. But it has additional problems, such as the autoimmune and the allergy problems. But the biggest problem is that you believe it's health food. And so you eat it without guilt. And you feed it to your kids that way. And that's very wrong. So I hope I've given you a chance to rethink this. Not only are dairy products not necessary for your health and bones, they're also destructive to your family. And it may be the most difficult message for you to get because there's been so much education, so much effort, so much money putting behind trying to give you the other message. But I promise you that it will be the greatest benefit to you and your family if you can get this correct. You are not a cow. Your children are not calves. You should not be consuming cow's milk. It is a serious health hazard. Thank you very much. Welcome back to our mornings. I'm just going to read a couple of emails. Um, Dear Felicity, I've just switched on. I've dedicated my life to God and saw your message about milk. I've been thinking about the dairy industry for some time. Thanks for this, as this has made up my mind on dairy products will be banned from our house, <laughs> but with love and grace. Oh, that's wonderful. Well done, Grace. You're on the right track. <laughs> um, I have used coconut milk, which has given me a good head of hair. <laughs> I use it also in porridge, and that's from Bernard. Amazing. That's really good news. Well, Felicity, we're coming towards the end of our show today. Is there anything you'd like to wrap up? And well, just I'd just like to finish with some good news. Um, the good news is that you can make the most delicious ice cream from frozen bananas. <laughs> And so you can flavor it with different berries and make it absolutely wonderful. So you can have peach ice cream and apricot ice cream and uh, all kinds of... I think of for our viewers' sake only, you should bring in some samples. And we try that during the show, <laughs> only for the viewers to see, obviously. I mean, I'll try not to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not leaving them comfortless. They have beautiful ice cream and they have the most delicious, delectable juices. What is your favorite ice cream? 
Oh, I love the berry one. We did that last night. We had blackberries and blueberries with the ice cream. It was absolutely wonderful. And how wonderful. did you prepare that? I just peeled the bananas and froze them as soon as I arrived back in the flat. And then you just push them through the juicer, or you can blend them, actually. Leslie did that beautifully the other night. And so you can add any fruit you want with it. And, and of course, it's dairy-free and it's sugar-free. And it's the best ice cream you ever tasted. And to reiterate that people who want to replace coffees and teas, there is an alternative, isn't there? The hot drink with the honey, the lemon, the ginger and the mint is wonderful. And chamomile tea is another easy one if you're out in a restaurant and you know everyone's having coffee at the end of the meal. You can just have, ask for chamomile tea and now they seem to do it everywhere. Peppermint tea is good as well. You can do mint tea straight from the garden if you're growing mint. OK, well, sadly, we're coming towards the end of today's show. Um, Thank you for joining us. Thank you for sending in all your emails. We haven't had the chance to receive, to go through all of them. We'll try and see if we can save some for the next show um, next week. So I'd like to remind our viewers that we are, um, we have a catch up service on Revelation TV. So it's www.revelationtv.com. We have a YouTube page, youtube.com slash RTV Europe. We're on Facebook and Twitter, facebook.com slash Revelation TV. Thank you for joining us. Have a fantastic weekend and God bless.